going to have a make have a go at making this closed peg holder. Um, what you need to do is go on to all free sewing uh, or put in your browser D-I-R-N-D-L, don't know how to pronounce it, I assume it's like a Scandinavian style closed pin bag pattern. That will take you to straight directly to this pattern. You only need to download pages 2, 3 and 4. All the rest are just rubbish, you're just wasting your ink. And um, one of the pages will be what you need. And all this is your list, but I should be writing that down anyway. Um, there's not many instructions, so I'm going to do a tutorial. That's the other page that you'll need. So basically, you just want pattern pieces, the second, third and fourth. And you need to look on all free sewing, put this in your browser. And um, it will take you straight to the pattern. On number two page, at the top, there it says download the pattern pieces here. And that will give you something like this, but you must do it 200%. Let me just lift you up. So there you go, that's 200%. Uh, that's the back. That's the front. And that's the apron piece. So once you download it, number 2, 3 and 4, printed off the pattern pieces, we're ready to go. Right, the first thing you do, cut two apron panels, turn them right sides together and sew and join them across the top. Just do an eighth of an inch, just baste and stitch. All you want to do is just join them. Right, you've sewn it across the top just to join the two pieces together. Now you want to fold it and press. Turn it the other way around and press. Right, here is the press fabric, and this is your apron, apron um, pattern. Put the fabric so it matches from one side to the other, and then you've got pleat lines. Just transfer the pleat marks over to this one. Now you've neaten the edges. Use whatever pen you wish, this isn't very good. I think I'll get a better pen. There you go, that's better, you can see them better. Just transfer the markings down from one side to the other. And what we're going to do is turn the top over to meet you, so this one will come into that one and that one will come into this one. So basically, just pull that over, line meets line, and pin. Line meets line. What you're doing is trying to form a pleat. Now you might do your pleats differently. You might like, I quite like that look there. There you go. And again, do it the same way as you've done the other side. Take one to the other, and then pin. And then bring this one in to that one. It's a lot easier when you've got both fab when you've sewn the fabrics together. And pin. So now you've got the pleats, and it actually looks a bit like an apron now. And all we need to do is baste. Just baste across there, you don't need to sew all the way across, you've already attached that bit. Just baste them in eighth of an inch. There you go, that's my bias binding all clipped on. You can use pins or a clip. And there it is, both sides. Make sure that your bias binding is pushed right on. I actually ironed mine in half. All I had to do then was uh, just push it over the edge and then clip. Um, and then sew on. Uh, as close as to the inside there as possible, probably an eighth of an inch all the way around. 
and that's what you should have when you've finished. Uh, make sure that you've caught both sides. And then we'll move on to the next bit. Now, the next thing you want to do is centre the uh, pocket onto your front and then stitch all the way around. Now, there are no markings. So, that's where I've put mine. Don't forget you've got to turn this up at the bottom here. You don't put it too low and you need a ribbon to go across the top. So what you're trying to do is centre it where you think you would like it to go. So I'm going to put mine about there. And then pin. And then sew all the way down on the outside all the way around. There you go, now you have created your front with a pocket. Um, so obviously the next bit, this is why I wanted mine doubled and not single, so it would make this top a lot neater. Even though we're going to cover it, that obviously won't be sewn on. So the next stage is to put your ribbon across. So you want it to cover. And again, there are no instructions of where. So just pin, pin it on where you want it to go. And what I would suggest is pin it right to the edge to show you there because when you put them together, I leave it overhanging because when you put the all together, that will um, sew that side down all the way across, covering the top and over here. And again, right to the edge, because that will be tucked in. But my suggestion is to hand sew it. Because you don't want to actually close the top, because you've just made a pocket. So what I might do is just sew just down here, but I should still be using white cotton. And that's what you do with that one. Somehow the sides will be caught in when it's all sewn together and uh, probably hand sew that in the centre across there. So I've caught mine just across the top on either side and I've also caught it on the edge both sides so that when I tuck it in that's going to stay put and it's not going to move. What I will do because this is open and uh, what I will do is either hot glue it or tack it down somehow. I might just put some press. I might um, actually what I might do is uh, put some studs in there. It would make it different, wouldn't it? Right, the next step is to put the front and the back right side together, pin or clip all the way around, and then sew together. I think it's a uh, quarter of an inch seam to see how you feel on yours. There you go, all the way around, and that way you'll be securing the ribbon at the side at the same time. I found mine easier to be pinned from the back because that's a different shape. I've, I think mine's set at like three quarters of an inch and I'm starting at the top of the shoulder. Follow the shape of the back, even though the front's slightly out there. You can always trim afterwards. Make sure you check that everything's been caught in.
all the way around. Right, once you've got it sewn together, you're obviously going to pull it round the other way. Uh, make sure that you've caught both sides because as you can see, mine was out there. Uh, but I did follow the back of my pattern so it was all the same shape. So cut some bits off if it's too wide. Make sure that's caught. And cut it off all the way around if needs be because you're going to turn it the other way around. So once you've trimmed it all, turn it all out to uh, the right side and then use something then to press all the corners out and all your edges and then press. And then that's what mine looks like. There you go. And then we've just got to do the neck. So the next bit that we have to do is the neckline and again they've used red and I'm going to use green bias binding all the way around the neckline and then once I've clipped on we'll sew it on. So I trimmed my shoulders so that uh, only a little bit just so I can get them to go completely around in a circle on both seams that made it easy to get the bias binding on. I folded my bias binding on uh, and then went round and then I folded it again and went over the top so it makes the back nice and neat. I should make sure that that's all pushed in uh, when I start to sail. Uh, put your join at the back of the neck out the way. Basically then just sew as close as to the edge as possible all the way around. So that's my bit done except for the pocket. Now according to the picture you can put rip rack around the edge. If you've got anything else you want to put decorate it with, feel free. I'm not sure how much of that you can actually see, but what I've done is made a hole with the punch. Then I've put them the long one in at the bottom, short one at the top, and then I'm gonna to push together. There you go, that's one side secure. And again, you put the one with the long bit underneath. You should be able to find where you puncture quite easy. Put that on the top of there. Put the female bit on top. See if you can get your fingers in that is. And then that's it, that's all right, and then push down. That's it. Now these marks obviously is where the pocket was. And then obviously I measured where I wanted the so now my ribbon and my pocket are secure. And I got a pocket that's lined. There you go. And I've just got to iron it, press it. And there it is. That's my peg bag completely finished. Plus pegs. There you go. I will write everything down um, at the front of the video to what you need, where 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 you need to go, so you can pause it. Um, so you've got everything. The instructions aren't brilliant, uh, but if you follow my tutorial, it'll make it a lot easier. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have fun making one of these. I think they look brilliant hanging on the line. Um, have fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thumbs up. Thank you. Have fun.